and welcome back to Advent Sunday number two. I'm the Reverend Dr. Joanne Mercer from the Anglican Parish of Twillingate. And I'm the Reverend Juanita Freeman from the Anglican Parish of Selvage. And this is, as Joanne had said, the second Sunday in Advent. And as Christians, we will light the Advent wreath and we do it to remind us that we wait for Christ's light to be born into the world again and again. So the wreath is in the shape of a circle to remind us that God's love for us is never ending. So today we're lighting the candle of peace. Last week's was the candle of hope. And this week, the candle of peace. And we do so to remember that Jesus brings the promise of peace. Peace in our hearts. Peace between family and friends. Peace between nations, peace between human beings and all creation. Let us quiet our hearts and minds. Close your eyes or focus on the candle. Notice your breathing. Be aware of your breath as it enters and leaves your body. As you breathe in, say to yourself, Jesus. As you breathe out, say, send your peace. Jesus, help your light to shine in us as peace. Our opening prayer, even if we cannot gather in person. Emmanuel, God with us. Even if some Christmas traditions have had to go. Emmanuel, God with us. Even if we may not get to hug family and friends. Emmanuel, God with us even if we cannot sing carols beside each other. Emmanuel, God with us. Even if Christmas cheer is harder this year. Emmanuel, God with us. Our prayer of approach. Surely God's salvation is at hand for those who fear God. That his glory may dwell in our land. Love, Lord God, your word is not distant. Your love is not rationed. Your grace is at hand. For you are present with your people as we call upon you. We come to bless you as our creator. We come to honor you as our God. You are our heavenly father, revealed through Jesus Christ, your son. We have come to delight in your word and be transformed by your love. Amen. God of faithfulness and truth, you sent your servant John the Baptist to preach in the desert and summon people to repentance. Make us and all things new, that in the wilderness of our hearts, we too, may prepare a way over which your son will walk. Our land needs you because so many things are done wrongly or not done at all. Our land needs you because it is suffering from the way we mistreat your world and its people. Our land needs you because without the knowledge of God, there is poverty of spirit. And we need, we need you. you. We inhabit this land. We share its faults. We confess the sins and failures 
which have harmed others and harmed ourselves and have grieved your spirit. Have mercy on us for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Your salvation is at hand. May your spirit bear witness within our spirits that we belong to you and that we are heirs to eternal life through Jesus Christ. We bless you that this Jesus Christ is no mere formula of prayer, that the word became flesh and lived among us, that your son lives as our friend in heaven, that your spirit is given to your people. Give us discernment of mind that we understand your word. Give us discernment of heart that we become tender towards you and other people. Give us discernment of life that we take the right turnings and follow the right paths in company with our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with the Father and the Spirit be glory and praise forever. Amen. Well, our psalm today and our psalms of Advent are um, verses of uh, Psalm 85. Verse 1 and 2, and then 8 through 13. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You pardoned all their sin. Silah. Let us hear what God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace to his people to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. God. Now it's so. time the words of wisdom. <laughs> No pressure, no pressure. None whatsoever, none whatsoever. And sometimes I wonder what wisdom I have to offer. Mm -hmm. But I know that how the Psalms do strike at my heart sometimes. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and this week, last week was the stirring up. But this week, the one word that jumped first is, is, the, um, is that word kiss. And, and, and the steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. And there's a, there's such, this is such a beautiful image. It's so rich in its intimacy. You know, that the, the, the thought that God's love and faithfulness and the righteousness of those who follow it, they'll come together in such a way, you know, Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness from the sky. You know, the, the ways of the people, people will finally be turned to the ways of God and there is perfect harmony. And that moment of meeting is, is just, you said that image, it's just so powerful and so beautiful in, its, in, 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 in that word, you know. Yeah, and I mean, one of the things about this psalm is how many times is will, right? For he will speak peace. Steadfast love and faithfulness will. It will happen. Righteousness and peace will. Faithfulness will. Righteousness will. God, the Lord God will give what is good. And so I think that, you know, in the season of Advent, when we're sort of looking with expectation, it's really important for us to remember that God will do these things. That these are not just 
uh, airy fairy ideas. I right? the, the, these are actuality, and that's why, like you, I love that verse. Um, the steadfast love. Well, the hesed, the steadfast love, is one of my favorite terms in scripture. Anyhow, yes, um, because it is. It's so powerful in that image, isn't it? Yeah, and it's, yeah. And oh. It's hard to translate because it's a kind of um, faithfulness, like a, a, almost like a pursuant kind of faithfulness that God. The, this steadfast love, this has said, um, you know, that God continues to pursue us, even when we go astray, that, you know, that this is constant. Um, and I like to, at least in my imagination, on like the steadfast love and faithfulness and righteousness and peace, because in, in one way, uh, to me, it's, it's like a uh, I like the intimacy that you talked about, but this joining together of sort of large ideas and action, right? Right. And so you have this sort of, uh, to me, faithfulness is, is something you live out, right? It's, it's very much yes. embodied, which is again, an important theme to be thinking about uh, in um, in Advent. So it, when you have the ideas of these meetings, you have ideas of embodiment, that this is not just an idea, but that it is embodied and lived out. And same thing with righteousness and peace. And I like that, Notion because um, lots of spiritual writers uh, write about um, about this need for balance and depending on where we are in our, our lives that there are times when we are able to sort of conceptualize and, and pray um, but not able to, to actual actualize and do and sometimes we can do in, and we're not able to really pray to God. And I think, you know, during this pandemic, I think that's really important for us to, to recognize that balance and that that's okay. So there might be times when you're so tired um, that you have no words, you know, to, to give to God, or you're so frustrated by the things that are happening around that you don't feel you can pray, but maybe you can do something. Maybe you can have an act of faithfulness. Maybe you can just go to church like, or, or listen to <laughs> an online service and just sit there and receive yeah. it. Or maybe you can, you know, uh, you drop off something to somebody in need or go on the PWRDF World of Gifts webpage and make a donation. Or sometimes maybe you're sitting in your jammies and going out <laughs> to, to people is too much. But yeah. you can pray and think about God and call, you know, that, that there is a balance and a give and take in, in, in perfect harmony, these meet and join together. But it's, it's almost like a dance, right? It meets together and it comes apart. And um, yeah, I sort of like that image. Yeah. Uh, Brugerman writes about, uh, I think it's about all the Psalms really, but he says, despair is the fate of a world without God where there are no new gifts to be given, the Psalms refuse that world, knowing that God has not yet finished. And that sounds so, that just so. And uh, when we were looking at this Psalm in particular and uh, understanding about Advent being a time of waiting and expectation, it reminds us what we're waiting for, you know, a time when God's peace, love, faithfulness and right relationships will will prevail and then we remember that jesus embodies these gifts in his life these meet right mm -hmm. uh, the, the gifts of of love steadfast love and faithfulness and peace and right relations jesus made these flesh and dwelt among us right that's the promise that's the the well, the hope, that's what we live with. But we also know that we are in call to embody. Embody what Jesus embodied in this world. Yeah, so. We're called, yeah, we're called to, to live this out. And Jesus yes. gives us, excuse me, <clears throat> Jesus gives us hope that we can do that. That that, yes. is, that is possible. It is possible to live out peace. It is possible right. for these things to meet. Um, we may not be as perfect, um, you know, as, as Jesus uh, embodied, no. but we are God's co-workers. We are we are journeying. So we do embody these, and and we do make that in. That's how we make incarnation real for others. Is right. you know because when we do that, then the Psalm tells us 
and then faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will pour down. It's in that effort, you know, imperfect as it may be to live that out, that we, it becomes real for ourselves and real for our community. That's how we become witnesses, right? That's right. So when steadfast love, faithfulness meet in our lives, when righteousness and peace embrace in business, family relations, our nation, whatever, God is near at hand. And when we work for justice, we make way for God in our world. And so what this psalm does, it opens our eyes to see the signs of God's saving work in the world and beyond the church, but in all things, right? Amen. 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 Uh, I was double in with, what is it? Um, how wonderful for that God, the great promise keeper, is not yet finished with us or creation. How glorious is God's faithful love. <laughs> I have to say, that reminds me. Yeah. Uh, so where it is. Um, uh, I have a little, you remember Precious Moments things? I think you probably still get them. Yes. I, have little, I have a little plaque. Yeah. It says, be patient. God isn't finished with me yet. <laughs> right. Does it say how <laughs> And be that's patient. right. Very yeah. patient. So from that, we move into thanksgivings. Let us give thanks for the goodness of the Lord. For the opportunity to meet in worship, in person and online. Thanks, thanks. Be God. What has been good for us and others during this past week? Thanks be to God. For those who provide for our needs, and especially for the sick and the disadvantaged, and we lift particularly all the frontline workers, our healthcare attendants in the system, and, and the, the scientists and lab workers, and all the people who are working towards a, a, a vaccine for this, uh, for COVID. Thanks be to God. For those who give leadership in the church, or our bishops and clergy and lay people, all those who are witnesses to God's peace, to those who give leadership in our country, in our provinces, uh, in our national government, in our communities and our towns, all those who are trying to keep us safe and provide some guidelines and regulations and that we are going to be able to, to live safely with one another. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. Home. For family and friends, near and far, be we in a bubble or separated. For companions in the way of Christ. Thanks be to God. For all that makes life beautiful and interesting and worthwhile, thanks be to God. The ministry of John the Baptist and all who direct others to Jesus, thanks be to God. For those who have gone before us and enjoy the life of heaven. Thanks. Thanks be to God. So our meditation on the Lord's Prayer. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and all that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God in whom is heaven, The hallowing of your name echo through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In the temptations, and tests strengthen us. 
from trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. That blessing. May the coming of the day of God be your earnest desire. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and all whom you love this day and forever. Amen. So you remember last week, as we never to take hope out with us, we wrote hope on our hands. Peace right. is a longer word, but I think I can do it. So okay. before and we I'll just trace yeah, and you can, or you could trace it. So you can write, ooh, I still have trouble finding that camera. Uh, peace. <laughs> so I wrote it on my hand. Peace. Yes, right, God wrote, or you could just go peace. You can make the, the, the letters to remind but, you um, that peace. we are sent out to take it with us. That's right. That's right. Peace. Peace. So as we take our peace out, we prepare a way like John the Baptist did for that peace to become a reality. Where there seems to be no way to end the conflict and violence of our time, we pray that you would teach us, O oh Christ, to prepare the way. Where we can see no way to provide for the needs of all people, we pray that you will show us, O oh Christ, how to prepare the way. Where we can find no way to work together for justice, we pray that you would change us, O oh Christ, until we prepare the way. Where we are unable to believe in a way to live simply, responsibly and mindfully, we pray that you will inspire us, O oh Christ, to faith that prepares the way. In a world where we are tempted to see so many of our challenges as dead ends. We pray, excuse me, we pray for a new vision, a new heart, and a new commitment to prepare the way of your reign, your grace, your shalom, for the liberation, justice, and peace that you will bring. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for worshiping with us uh, today, and we'll see you next week for the third week of Advent. God bless you. Bye-bye.